Merry Christmas, Beach Church. My name is Joe Donahue. On December 4th, the Beach Church partners voted overwhelmingly to vote on me to serve as your lead pastor. And my family and I cannot wait to land in Myrtle Beach mid-January and join you in leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. You know, roughly 2,000 years ago, Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem and Mary gave birth to the baby Jesus. Jesus fully God and fully man was born. To that moment, it was the greatest gift God had ever given to man. Jesus, who had always existed, humbled himself to be born a baby. God in the flesh would be dependent upon his parents to live. The creator gave up his rights as God to be cared for by those he created. That is a sign of God's extravagant love for you. If God didn't love you, if God did not love us, he certainly would not have sent his son into the world. God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn us, to make us feel bad, or to cause us to feel guilt about our past mistakes and failures. Jesus came into the world to give us hope. John 3, 17, the apostle John writes, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. God is the God of second chances. No matter what you've done or what has been done to you, you can experience the life-changing love of God through surrendering your life to Jesus. Jesus came to save the world by giving the world a second chance to have a personal relationship with God. And that is great news. If you're interested in discovering how to experience a personal relationship with God, stop by Guest Central or, or reach out to us online. Somebody will gladly help you take a first step to know Jesus. And if you would like to follow me on social media, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Uh, feel free to reach out and connect. I'd love to hear from you. As we look forward, I anticipate great things as we become a connected people, captivated by Christ, whose changed lives will change lives. I hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas. We can't wait to see you. God bless.
Welcome to Downer's Diner, where our standards are low and the food doesn't even meet them. How can I help you? Greetings. We have journeyed very, very far and we've been traveling for many days. We would love to get a bite to eat. Yes. What do you recommend? Another restaurant. <laughs> the pie's not bad. Well, in, in that case, could we get some pie in? So, for how many? Uh, I'll get one that all you can split. So, what brings you in five minutes before my shift? We're following a star. A star that is leading us to the king. To check the palace? Y yes, well, it's, it's a very different king. We're looking for someone probably a very bit younger. A baby! Probably. So, those for your king? Yes. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. You never heard those three words? Amazon, gift, card. Don't you think the, think the king has, you know, whatever he wants? Yes, well, he's not that kind of king. You know, you have to pay with real money. Oh, great, another customer. So what brings you here? You know, I have cats to go home to. I'm sorry, I'll, 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 be, I'll be quick. I just need two warm drinks for uh, me and the lady outside. Oh, you mean that pregnant lady out there? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's been such a trooper this entire trip. So tell me, you think, think the kid's gonna look more like you or her? Um... Probably her. I, I mean, I'm not the father, technically. <laughs> so you're telling me that you've been traveling all this way with a pregnant lady and the kid's not even yours? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Look, it's not what you think. This baby's special. Where'd they go? <sighs> Three guys, maybe more, gifts, gold, frankincense, all, all kinds of stuff. Wh where'd they go? What's it to you? My kingdom, lady, that's what it's to me. I'm looking for where they where they go. Okay, fine, thank you. <sighs> what a night. Baby king, <laughs> pregnant lady. Seemed, sure seemed to get that last guy awfully upset, but I you know what they say. Baby changes everything. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I was this close to wearing that cape out here. <laughs> Saner heads prevailed. Um, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that we I'm sure everyone in here has probably an enc encountered a, a Debbie Downer at some point in the season, right? Like we, we want to keep our spirits up and then someone brings it way down. And if you haven't, I'm sorry to tell you, it was probably you. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited. I'm so thankful that you guys are here to have an opportunity for us to celebrate Christmas together in the gift that has been given to us through Jesus. Now, that gift looks very different than we were expecting, what people for thousands of years were expecting. But I would say it turned out so much better than we could have ever hoped. And uh, so I'm excited to be able to share a little bit about that with you today. Um, and another thing that I would love to just invite you to, because this is the only time I get for announcements, I would, if you have the opportunity and you're here tomorrow morning, we would love for you to celebrate with us at our Christmas Day service. Uh, we're going to be meeting at 930 in the morning. If you want to wear your PJs, wear your PJs. We're going to have a good time just celebrating together um, and just 
talking about the gift that has been given to us. And that is the theme of the evening is the gift that God has given us. But as we move on to the rest of our service, I would love to take just a moment and pray over what is to come. So if you would, please bow your heads with me. To Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the love that you have shown us, the mercy that you have shown us. Lord, thank you for not being limited by my imagination, Lord, and that when I get disappointed by a gift that I've opened, Lord, that your gift is greater. Lord, thank you for perspective. Thank you for this season. Lord, we, we are surrounded by the commercialization of a holiday, Lord, but we have an opportunity to stop dead in our tracks, to pause and to hear what you would have to say. Lord, I'm thankful that when the rest of the world is screaming to get our attention, your still small voice is what prevails. Lord, be with us in the rest of this service. Let your words be what are heard, what are magnified through every song, every spoken piece, every video. Lord, let it all be used for your glory. I pray all these things, the blessed, precious name of Jesus. Amen.
officially. We plunged into the cornucopia, quivering with desire and the ecstasy of unbridled avarice. They're savings bonds. Do you maybe have any that you bought seven years ago? Oh. Anticipation. I'm sure every single person in here has at one point in their lives gotten to that nervous place of anticipation ready to open a Christmas gift, right? I'm sure many of us, especially our, our, our younger congregation members, are, are excited about tomorrow morning to be able to open up their Christmas gifts. You know, and I think about the word anticipation. I think about seeing that wrapped gift. I don't know about you. I'm not good at it. My dad is like, he has x-ray vision. He can just like shake it and be like, yeah, that's a cheese grater. I, just, I don't understand how he does that. Um, but... Uh, I, I, I catch myself thinking about what's possibly in the box, especially if it's something nondescript, right? You know, uh, if it's the shape of a bowling ball, well, you kind of give it away there. You know, but if, if it's just a square box, that the possibilities are endless, right? It could be anything. And I, I think about all those videos of like, you know, that Jimmy Kimmel puts out about these kids opening up avocados and salt shakers and, you know, and things like that. And it's, it's not what they were expecting when they opened their gift, and usually that's met with unbridled rage in the eyes of a small child who did not want an avocado for Christmas. You know, but I think about the fact that we see the gift of Jesus so many different times represented through the eyes of different people in the Bible. And that we get to see how people were expecting the gift they were looking at the box. They heard that a gift was coming and then it was this, this possibility. Well, it could be this. It could be that. It could be something completely different. It could be, it could be something just amazing. And, and, and you start to get on this, this rabbit trail of imagination and, and, and you're wondering what is in there and you're anticipating finding what's in the box. But what you find in the box isn't what you were anticipating. And I think about our sermon series this year anticipation. We've spoken about, I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to speak about the wise men. Now the wise men, they knew that a gift was to be presented, right? They saw the star and they traveled knowing that this was the fulfillment of prophecy, right? And they were expecting it a certain way. Well, the first thing that we see them expecting is that they were thinking that, okay, he's, he's the king, so he's probably going to be at the palace, so they go to the palace, and guess what? They didn't find Jesus. They found Herod. And then through other prophecies they, they were reading and being told about by scholars and priests that led them to Bethlehem, and instead of finding uh, this extravagantly robed child who would be the fulfillment of prophecy, they found the toddler in the hands of two working people. You know, and that, that led me to the, the, the gift when I open this up, it's very different, right? So I think about, you know, all those videos you see of kids like opening up and like Mickey balloons pop out or their Mickey ears and they're like, we're going to Disney World. And my favorite ones, and I could not find one this year was like the young kids that don't know what Disney World is. And they're like, okay, that sounds cool, thanks. But like they have no idea the experience they're about to be a part of. And, and even those that know exactly what Disney World is, okay, so they know that they're going to get to go and, and they're going to have a great time, but they don't know exactly what it's going to look like. Well, the wise men knew what they were going to. They knew they were headed straight towards the fulfillment of prophecy. They were headed towards the Messiah that had been prophesied for thousands of years. 
but what they found didn't look anything like what they were expecting. And I think about the experience, the journey, the, the trip, the thing that is, is not necessarily tangible. I can't put a trip to Disney World on a shelf. The same way they, they brought gifts, but the real gift they received was the experience of getting to travel and not only travel, but to travel to the feet of a toddler, to be able to share with them what God had, had, had shown them, which led them to escape from Herod's rule. Some, some really amazing thing happens. And I think about the journey home for the wise men, because it doesn't just say that, that uh, the angels spoke to Mary and Joseph. It says that they came to the wise men in a dream and, and they, were, they were instructed to go home a different way. And I think about every step that they took, every, every time they sat down or every time they started to recount what they had just experienced to one another, it was a life-changing event, something they could have never expected, what they were thinking it was going to look like when they started that journey. I think of the anticipation of coming into the presence of a king, but instead what they found was a savior. And so that is the gift of experience and what I got out of the present. That the, three, the three wise men, as we know them, right? Opened on Christmas. Every time around Christmas, my kids always ask me, hey, Dad, what do you want? My wife asks me the same thing. And I always say the same thing every year. Nothing. I hate to straight up lie to them, but I do it every Christmas. Mario, what do you want? I want a table saw. Marty, you already have one. I want a bigger one. What else do you want? Uh, well, I, I want a new flat iron skillet grill. Marty, you already got one. Yeah, but a newer one can hold 48 pancakes. <laughs> you know why? Because when I, when I look at these things, I, I want to be the best at those things. I want to be, you know, this, this is Marty can cook when really the grill's doing all the work, but they don't know that. And when I'm doing these things and, and it's growing my kingdom in my own little world and I start thinking about those things and, and even when I'm thinking about Herod and, and Herod had his idea in his own mind of what he thought of God and, and, and where he was and, and, and his own little thing. He wanted no one else to take anything away from him, his power, his thoughts, any of those things. But Herod got exactly what he needed. And so when I start thinking about the things, yeah, I want the table saw. I want the bigger grill. But instead, I got a tie. <laughs> Thanks. I don't really need that. Well, yeah, you do. You don't have any more. Uh, I can't cut wood with this. Oh, there's something else in the box. Let me see. Uh, it's a belt. Actually, my belt's breaking, so I need a new belt. But it's not what I wanted. A lot of times when we look at Jesus and we look at the birth and we think about what Jesus has done, it's not really what we think we need. It's not really what we think we want. But Jesus is and has always been everything that we need. And so as we think about King Herod and, and not wanting anyone to, to be over him, to, to, to rule, to, to be in control, knowing that without a shadow of a doubt that God is in control anyway. But being able to submit to that, there will be no other king but me. A lot of times we do the same thing. So this Christmas, as we're thinking about our gifts and we think about what the main gift is, the whole reason for this entire season is Jesus not being only born, but being born so that he may die, so that we may live. Might not be what we think we wanted, but it's exactly what we needed. Because without that, there is no life. There is no hope. 
there is no joy. But in him, he is everything that you'll ever need. And if we're honest, he'll be everything that we ever wanted. So given the fact that Joseph was a carpenter, I'd have to think that uh, the tool he would have wanted would have been one of these things. These are awesome. This is an oscillating multi-tool, or as I tell my wife, it's, it's this thing. <laughs> this, this tool can, uh, it can cut things, it can cut in places, it can sand in places that no other saw and no other sander can do. And I, I would have to think that for a carpenter, it would have been the ultimate tool to have. But, you know, because of the gift of a positive pregnancy test, along with the messages that he had received from God about eight and a half months prior to that, Joseph's gift this Christmas was going to be entirely different. Instead of a gift that he really wanted, instead of that multi-tool or whatever that might have been, instead of that gift, the gift that, he could, have, that could have enhanced his trade, that could have enhanced his ability to make a living and support his family, the gift that Joseph was going to receive that Christmas would not only change his life, but it would change the world. On that Christmas morning, Joseph was going to become the stepfather of the Savior of the world. As I said in my message a couple of weeks ago, can you imagine Joseph's anticipation, knowing that he would be responsible for the upbringing of the most important child ever to be born? Imagine the weight of that responsibility. You know, there's a gift that a lot of kids, uh, they often want or they get at Christmas. That would be uh, a puppy. And, you know, they, uh, that's a gift that will change your world. Kid, you know, but kids, they want the thrill. They want the fun that a puppy can bring, but they don't want the responsibility. They don't think about the messes the feeding, the care, and all the other stuff that goes into to raising a puppy. You know, a couple of years ago, um, Marlene and I, we ventured back into the dog world after not having had one for about three years prior to that. You know, we had a couple cats, and, you know, they're awesome. They're, they're uh, like me, they're low maintenance, easy going. And then one Sunday after church, we, uh, we left here, we went to El Cerro down in Surfside, we were sitting there and golf was on TV and yeah, that's about as interesting as watching paint dry, right? So Marlene asked them to change the channel and they did, they changed it to a dog show. So as we're watching that dog show, this new, this breed came on that we weren't familiar with. It was the miniature American Shepherd. So Marlene expressed some interest in that. Next thing I know, she'd researched them on the internet and she was looking for breeders. Then, within two weeks, we had found the very one we wanted, and we'd put a deposit down on it. And the breeder was great. I mean, every week, she would send us pictures and updates, and every week, we'd be getting more and more anxious to get him. And then the day finally came, and we were going to head to Garysburg, North Carolina, and pick up our new puppy. But as that day came, anxiety set in. I started to second-guess our decision the weight of the responsibility began to set in. We hadn't had a puppy in over 15 years where we were ready to take on that responsibility again. We were enjoying the freedom that life offers when you don't have that kind of obligation. Did we have the time? Did we have the energy for a new puppy? Had we made a mistake? Well, we went ahead and we got him. Here's one of his baby pictures. Yeah, isn't he awesome? <laughs> And I have to say, I am so glad that we didn't back out of that because Ruger is one of the, he's just, he's amazing. And he brings so much joy into our lives today. But he has definitely changed things in our lives as well. And needless to say, he lived up to everything that I was anxious about. He does require a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. And we have lost some of that freedom that we were enjoying back then. He was and he is full of so much energy, so much so that about eight months into getting him, we needed to get our puppy a puppy. So here's a picture of his little brother when he was a puppy. <laughs> and now here's a more recent picture of the two of them, and they are, they are absolutely incredible. And did I mention they are a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. 
So put yourself in Joseph's sandals for a moment and just try to imagine his level of anxiety as he was about to get the gift of the responsibility of raising the king of kings. God was asking Joseph to raise the Savior as his own son. You know, it's not easy for us to entrust our children to someone else. So imagine God looking down on earth trying to choose a man to raise his own son. Joseph had God's trust, and most people never would have accepted that challenge. But Joseph did, and when that first Christmas morning came, he received the greatest gift in the history of all mankind. God honored Joseph's integrity by entrusting him with a tremendous responsibility. And because he accepted that responsibility, Joseph got a front row seat to the changing of the world, and he was instrumental in all that. Imagine what an incredible gift that must have been. So for us, you know, sometimes the gifts that we receive, they may not necessarily be what we want or maybe what we think we might need. But once we get our heads wrapped around actually accepting the gifts that God has given us, then just like the three people in this story, the difference in disappointment and overwhelming joy is all in our perspective. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the gifts that you give to us. Lord, we thank you that they are not the gifts that we think we need, but they are the very gifts that you know that we needed. Lord, we thank you for the, the gift of a Savior, that you came down from heaven and um, brought us life, that you brought light into a dark world. And today, as we live, you know, we live in a world that seems to get getting darker and darker by the day, but Lord, we thank you as we, uh, tomorrow morning, we, we celebrate the day that we recognize as the day that your son was born. So God, thank you that um, you sent mankind what we needed, not what the wise man might have thought they were, expect, were gonna go see, not what uh, Herod was looking to change, certainly not what Joseph was anticipating as he was going into a, a marriage, but Lord, thank you for, for sending your son to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. So God, in this Christmas season, we pray that we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And it's your name that we pray. Amen. Christmas Eve, the night before Jesus' birth. Two thousand years we still celebrate around the earth. But for many, the reason for the season has left their hearts. It's time to renew, bring it back to its very start. Story's not cute, it was a matter of our life or death. The baby king, the beating heart of God in his chest. In a fight for survival of everything pure and right. He fights to this day, even this very night. A new way for you to look at the birth of a Messiah, but the way it was meant to be. Christmas is more than the lighting of candles or presents found under a tree. It's not just the birth of a baby or a warrior to fight in our place. It's a far cry from all our traditions, so much more for the human race. 
And once we get our heads around it, it's a brand new Christmas. Maybe for you, every day feels like life or death. You're overwhelmed, you're fighting for every breath. Oh, the bills are past due, and the walls, they're closing in. And all you want for Christmas is for this season to end. A new way for you to look at the earth of Messiah, but the way it was meant to be. Christmas is more than the lighting of candles or presents piled under a tree. It's not just the birth of a baby or a warrior to fight in our place. It's a far cry from all our traditions, so much more for the human race. And once we get our heads around it, it's a brand new Christmas. Embers are burning, flames are flying higher. Lord, help me see the light and not the fire. Traditions, so much more for the human race. And once we get our heads around it, oh, if we could only get our heads around it, oh, once we get our heads around it, it's a brand new. So as we continue just in our thought process and thinking about Christmas, I can't help but wonder and think how it was when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And, and as we're thinking about the places around and, and how this has been prophesied for years, thousands of years, of uh, there would be one 
who would save the world and, and bring back a right relationship between God and man. I couldn't imagine, as I'm just thinking about this, how many people were just sleeping and missed it completely. And we start thinking about Christmas, and we start thinking about all that we've made Christmas with all the lights, all the, the decorations, the Christmas trees. I love them all. I'm like Clark Griswold. <laughs> Won't mind the brightest. Uh, my wife loves Christmas trees. Last count, we had 78. <laughs> but too many times we, we ask the question, you know, what is Christmas? What is Christmas to you? What is it to you and your family? And then we start thinking and naming all these things. Man, it's about the lights. It's about the songs. It's about gathering together with family. It's about giving. It's about all these different things. And, and then we get so tired building up. One of the things I love to do is just kind of go into the malls and just watch people. Man, they look stressed out. <laughs> then I forget I forget, was supposed to buy somebody something and I get stressed out. Usually when I get stressed out, I'm in Walmart. <laughs> but when we start thinking about all these things and, and we start thinking about Christmas, how many times in our own lives do we just wish it was over and done with? If I could just get through this one more celebration, one more family gathering. Man, if I could just get through that. A lot of you might right after here, yeah, I know what you're saying, Marty, I got to go somewhere. And we start thinking about those things, and we kind of miss what Christmas is all about. It's about God's promises being fulfilled. It's about a Savior being born for us. We might not have expected it, might not have wanted it, but it's for all. When we look at our lives, and when we leave here, the question is the same. What is Christmas to you? And what will you do with it? Christmas to me is remembering that I had no life until he gave me life. I was dead. In my transgressions. I was lonely. And he was there for me. He's always been my God. Though I haven't recognized him. He's always been a voice. Though it may be small. And even silent at times. But he has always. Been there. With me. And so when I think about Christmas, it's much more than gifts. It's much more than family gatherings. It's remembering because of him. Because of him, I can enjoy my family and gifts. And I can share the one gift that is greater than any other gift that I can ever receive. Even if I get the gift that can hold 48 pancakes. Even if I can get those things, no gift on this earth can compare to what Jesus Christ is to each and every one of us. That being said, that's not a gift we want to leave under the tree. It's not a gift that we just want to hide and hold on to and just keep it in a box. Jesus being Born so that we may live, being our Savior and Lord. We just don't want to just keep it to ourselves. This is a gift worth sharing. And so as we continue tonight, I want you to think about the gift that God's given you, what Christmas means to you, and how you are giving it to others. God's called us to be the light of the world. And because of what he's done in our lives, because he's changed us. Because many years ago, he was born to die 
so that I may live. Though I didn't deserve it, I want to share that with others. I want to be the light because the light is within me because of him. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all that you've done, all that you continue to do. Lord, I know nothing in your whole world, Lord, in in your thought process, everything that has happened, Lord, you have been a part of. You have orchestrated. Lord, from the beginning of time, as we look at the fall of man and we look at the fact that we were in need of, of a Savior, and for years, Lord, and years upon years, Lord, we've looked you were looked for to be born a savior, a king, the Messiah. Lord, we are on the other side of that. We understand that that has happened, Lord, and we also welcome your return as king and Lord of lords over all. But Lord, I pray that as we understand this gift, that while we were dead where we were at, we were dead in our tracks, Lord, that you saved us. And you loved us enough that you didn't want to keep us where we, were, where we were at. Lord, I pray today that we will take what you've done, the gift that you've given us, the gift of light, the hope that we have, the joy that we have, Lord, and we give it to others so that we can actually see peace on earth, that we may actually understand that peace starts within my own heart. Lord, knowing that you are continuously working. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Could have come like a mighty storm With all the strength of a hurricane You could have come like a forest fire With the power of heaven's flame You came like a winter snow, quiet and soft and slow, falling from the sky. Swept in like a tidal wave Or ran an ocean to rash our hearts You could have come through Like a roaring flood To wipe away the things we Falling from the sky in the night to 
Church, I would love it if you would stand with us. We're going to take a moment, sing one more congregational song before our candle lighting. If you would, please join with us as we sing away. tradition here. It's, uh, one is old <laughs> as the book we read the story of Jesus out of. There's candle lightings that happen in the first generation church. And I'm excited that we get to carry on part of that tradition tonight. So if we would go ahead and have our usher, ushers start uh, lighting candles here in just a moment. But if you would, please let me give a little safety briefing. Please don't throw these. Uh, if you have children with them, great. Just make sure they're not going to touch them. These do get really hot. Also, as we go to turn our candles out, if you would, please, just cover it up so you're not spitting uh, hot wax on the, the neck of the person in front of you. It's just, you know, we want everybody to have a Merry Christmas, you know? Uh, so if you would, please, as we, as we continue the candle lighting, if you could just light one to the other. And as we move forward, sing Silent Night with us, please.
What a beautiful sight. We can leave those lights down. We, we got them all hold. Just take just a moment. The beauty, the gift, the light in which Christ has shown in our lives, we get to spread to those around us. Let us take this in as a moment to show how we, as a community, as a congregation, can light up the darkness with what Christ has given us. I'd like to invite Pastor Sean, if he would, to come on out to lead us in our prayer this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for this night. Lord, we thank you that over 2,000 years ago, you left heaven, you left paradise, and you came down here in the form of a baby, in a manger, in a stable, and in probably the harshest of conditions. And that was just the beginning of, of the change of the world. God, thank you that um, you didn't come in as a king, but, but you came as a lowly baby, and that you 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 brought so much more than that, though. You lived a life that, that we can all learn from, that we can all model. So, Lord, we thank you just so much for that the gift of Christ Jesus coming to this world to give us life, to give us love, to give us mercy. So, God, as we go out of here tonight, Lord, I pray that we just really just rejoice in that, that we stay focused on you, not only tonight, not only tomorrow morning, but every day. We thank you for the gift of life that you've given us. God, we love you, we praise you, and it's your name that we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas, Peace Church. <laughs>